thank you for having me back. Some of you may recall that I was here two years ago when my first book, Full Asylum, came out. And I talked to you then. And after that, I actually went on a considerable amount of book touring around the country. I went to a number of states that I hadn't been to before. And uh, as a result of that, I've now been to 45 states, so by Obama math, I only have 12 more to go. <laughs> uh, speaking of Mr. Obama, I'm sure you all heard or heard about his speech two weeks ago when he said that ISIS, the Islamic State, is not Islamic. Now, I don't know how you reacted. My reaction was, how stupid is this guy? He must think that Starbucks is some sort of outer space currency. But, um, but all right, so I was trained as a scientist, and my professors always told me, you know, even when you think you know the answer, do the research do the experiment, you might be surprised. That's how many of the great discoveries in science were made. So in that spirit, I want to share with you some research that I've been doing about the Islamic world uh, to look more deeply into the question, is the Islamic State Islamic? And I think the approach to take to this question is to look in the history of Islam, and what are the great currents, what are the great intellectual trends, what were the key pivotal moments, and so on. And once you understand those, see how ISIS fits into that. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to take you through all 1,400 years of Islamic history tonight. Uh, I'm not even going to go back to the beginning with Muhammad and the Quran uh, as I'm sure you know there are a lot of verses in the Quran that uh, sound very much like ISIS verses about the Jews being cursed or verses about making war on the infidel. Uh, but you're probably already familiar with those. What I'd like to focus on is what I think was a key period in Islamic history, which was the hundred years from the year roughly 1090 to 1190. If you look at that century, at the beginning of that period of 100 years, uh, the Islamic world was very scientifically oriented and very tolerant to Jews and Christians and somewhat lax about enforcing Sharia. And I know some of you don't believe me when I say those things. Uh, I mean, I've met people at tea parties who uh, you know, said, oh, no Muslim any time ever made any contribution to science. And well, that, that's just not true, and I'll, I'll be addressing that uh, in a few minutes. Um, but during that period of 100 years, there was a religious revival. And by the end of that century, um, Toleration had been replaced, of, of Jews and Christians had been replaced by persecution, uh, and science had been uh, replaced by mysticism, and there was a crackdown on the enforcement of Sharia law.